Hey there friends, Dave Flytus, can Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our video channel. And you're looking at the South Fork of the Flathead River, a view I've never shown anybody before. This is uh, an interesting one. Uh, the water exceptionally clear coming out of Hungry Horse Reservoir. And uh, you might see a fisherman or two down there. It, but it's a uh, it's a pretty strenuous hike to get up from down there. So I uh, I would hesitate to say the fishing might be pretty good. Just saying, I don't know. But uh, I've, this is a missing person statement, uh, missing person segment, and I'm going to talk to you about it kind of I want you to enjoy the view and uh, get a look-see the other side of the river back there is very wild and uh, you might see some wildlife walk up on the uh, banks but in the meantime this is a missing person segment and I'm gonna give you some missing person stories and the first one is a very troublesome story that came out at the middle of May out of Cleveland and uh, Channel 19 News had this on May 16th. In the past two weeks Cleveland Police Department records show a rash of reported missing children between the ages of 12 and 17. Since May 2nd there have been 27 kids reported as active missing cases that number may be higher as some have been located and removed from the active file others have not consider that as a whole cleveland currently has a list total of 56 active missing children dating back a couple of years meaning almost half of the active cases are from just the past two weeks chief john majoy is not the only police chief for Newburgh hikes but also the board president of cleveland missing a nonprofit organization designed to help loved ones we have received several new cases where we are providing support to the families, Majoy said. The uptick can be viewed in several ways. The end of a school year, warm weather, etc. It's believed the majority of the cases are runaways and not abductions. Parents should keep a close eye on children and social media as this is a significant impact on teens. Well, I don't believe all that. I'm sorry. I think that there's something else going on. And I was paying attention to this. And just, uh, just eight days later, also in Cleveland, WOIO, the U.S. Marshals Service says a multi-jurisdiction operation has resulted in the successful recovery of 35 missing children from northern Ohio. Operation We Will Find You centered around the major metropolitan areas according to the U.S. Marshals. That included Cleveland, Toledo, Akron, Canton, and Youngstown. Though the Marshal Service says their searches took them as far as California, Arizona, and West Virginia. Before the operation, the whereabouts of all 35 children were unknown. According to the Marshals, they faced dangers such as physical and sexual abuse, neglect, substance abuse, or human trafficking. The Marshal Service is fully committed to assisting federal, state, and local agencies while operating and recovering endangered missing children. The main objective of the operation, we will find you, was to find as many critically missing children as possible. The epidemic of missing children in our country needs, to, needs a spotlight. It needs our focus. We hope operations like this sharpen that focus. Every child deserves a safe environment to grow up in. And I tell you this because we're in strange times, folks. I think everybody would admit that. Strange times, I mean. Yeah, it's stressful uh, for you and me as adults, but it's greatly stressful for children. And whereas we have the abilities to cope, most children don't have those abilities to cope. And because they don't, they need our help. And that's where you and I come in. We have to be able to listen to our children, be that sympathetic ear, care about them, and show compassion. And if we don't, then the issue is going to be that they're going to run from us, and we can't have that happen. 
So, that's uh, missing children. Uh, that's a lot of kids, so I, I am concerned. Now, let's talk about some missing ca person cases. The first one is out of British Columbia. And the case involves a man named Bradley Caden, C-A-D-D-E-N, 39 years old. Missing March 5th, 2023. 75 kilometers north of Revelstoke, BC on Lake Revelstoke. He had a cabin near the Downey RV Resort. Bradley and his wife live in Revelstoke and went to the cabin regularly. Now Bradley went there to the cabin. Let me give you a, where exactly it is. This is Revelstoke Lake. This is the U.S. border down here. This is Kelowna. This is Revelstoke Reservoir. It's a big reservoir. And their cabin was right on the reservoir. Very nice area. So Bradley went there to check on it after the winter. He was an avid outdoorsman. He had no health issues. None. And there was no cell phone or landline in that area. He regularly hikes 12 miles at a time. So he's no wimp. He knows the outdoors very well. He was last seen March 5th by neighbors sitting on the front porch of his cabin at about 3.15 p.m. Well, Briere, his wife, hadn't heard from Bradley in several days, so she called the RCMP to go check on him. And on March 13th, the RCMP found Brad's truck in front of the cabin, cell phone, wallet, personals, all in the cabin, which meant he went missing sometime between March 5th and March 13th. Now, I want to tell you guys something. Being missing for eight days and nobody looking for you is not a good sign. Now, this is Revelstoke Lake. This is the area they searched. This is an area about three quarters of a mile by a half mile. And the RV cabin area is right about right here. The area they searched is minutely small. <laughs> minutely small for a search. This is the search and rescue map that they put out online. If that's all they searched, I'm pretty, I'm pretty upset. So, The RCMP in Revelstoke headed the search. Canadian search dogs responded. Helicopters, ground pounders, fixed wing. Since he is a long hiker, the idea that they only searched this area is, is a joke. All of this area out in here is very wild and lots of force a place for you and me and and bradley to go hiking so i know that his family did a gofundme and they actually went out and searched more the canadian rockies in these areas are big mountains snow covered clean water briere said he had worked in the bush his entire life and the family believes that he went for a hike sometimes in, sometime in the early evening of March 5th or early March 6th, and he probably got injured. For the 1,000th time, if you're going to go hiking in the wilderness by yourself, if you are going to go hiking in the wilderness by yourself, carry a personal locator beacon please if you break your leg in the wilderness out here 10 miles out nobody's going to find you you won't be able to scream loud enough and if there's no cell service you're you're absolutely done now the RCMP stated that the canines did searches 
from three different agencies for 10 days. Now that's a good canine effort. They drove the trails and the roads. <clears throat> they put a drone up, did aerial search, lake and forest. They flew fixed wing above the forest and the lake, looking for a body, I'm guessing. They flew a helicopter at low altitude looking for people. And there was still snow on the ground when they started and they uh, did a snowmobile with sled. Now they also searched into May at the family level and friend level. Now Bradley was in very good health. Excellent hiker, excellent outdoorsman, and his wife said he had super good survival skills. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't care who you are. To survive in the British Columbia forest for two and a half months is not reasonable to assume at this point. Now they should bring in cadaver dogs and just comb that area. I don't know if they will. I hope they would, but there's no guarantee on it. This area, the big map, this is where it happened. So you get Kelowna, Kamloops. This is the Canadian Rockies up through here. The area around the lake has big mountains. And you, if you look at Revelstoke Lake on Google Maps, you're gonna see that it's surrounded by large mountains. And maybe, I doubt it, but maybe Bradley took a hike up there. He got bored and went up. I have no idea. But I can tell you that searching that small area by the cabin, uh, not a good move, not a good move, not enough. But if you're up there vacationing this summer, keep your eyes and your ears open. Bradley and his family are trying desperately to find him. And I realize we're into June, but uh, Revelstoke RCMP would like to hear from you if you have any information. 39 years old, 5'9", 186 pounds, Caucasian male, brown hair, blue eyes. Bradley Caden. Now, the second case, even a more troubling case to me just because I've been to all these areas that this next person has been to. And I'm saddened by this case just because I know the area so well, but the man's name is Joel Thomason, 31 years old. He went missing September 11th, 2021. This is Joel. He went hiking near Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and Eleanor Lake in Yosemite National Park. Now, according to the National Guard, who he worked for, he was raised in the Bay Area, graduated from Sonora High School, and then attended California State University at Stanislaus. He has a bachelor's degree in history and a minor in political science. And when I thought about that, those are usually the majors somebody has when they want to be an attorney. And keep that in mind. Well, in 2010 to 2011 on his uh, LinkedIn page, it shows that he was a public safety officer for California State University at Stanislaus, which is always perks up my ears. He had hiked Yosemite, Hetch Hetchy hundreds of times because for three years, during the summer months, he worked for the Hetch Hetchy Water and uh, Energy Department, clearing trails, roads, etc., and fire prevention. When he went missing in 2021, he was a U.S. Army Reserve. He lived in Denaire, east of Turlock, California. He was married and had one son. And besides working for the uh, Army Reserve, he also was a restoration specialist for a company in Turlock. I'm sorry, in Modesto. 
the National Guard spoke up, which was really interesting. And it went back and forth between the National Guard and Army Reserve. He was called the most reliable soldier they had, very, very experienced outdoorsman with good common sense. When you read that, those kind of compliments don't come real quick. But for to hear that, that's pretty impressive. Well, Joel had two friends die during his lifetime. And at one point, when the first friend died, he went up into the mountains to talk to God, clear his head. I understand that. That's something I've done when I've lost people. And just prior to September 11th, he lost another friend. And he told his family that he was going to backpack into Lake Eleanor and go fishing. And he was going to go for a two-day hike. He was carrying a Kelty brand backpack, yellow, it's kind of a yellow-gray color and red, with a red inflatable boat that he was going to carry in, like a kayak, to fish the lake. He was going to return on uh, September 9th. He was going to be in the area of Miguel Meadows. Now this is a map and this is Hetch Hetchy Reservoir this is Lake Eleanor this area is Pine Mountain Lake I've actually stayed at Pine Mountain Lake several times got in an Airbnb and stayed there it's a uh, gorgeous place the uh, the area of Hetch Hetchy gets rare, very remote very quickly. In Lake Eleanor, small lake, not a lot of people go to it. Beautiful place. Well, when Joel didn't return, his family called Yosemite National Park Rangers and they, they brought in the entire infantry for this one. He was reported missing on September 11th at 2.30 p.m. National Park Service directed the search and rescue. 11 agencies all the way from Santa Cruz County to Butte County responded on this search. It was a big one. And the reason being is that Joel was carrying something pretty obvious, a big red kayak and a big backpack. They knew exactly where he was going. He was a person who knew the area intensely. He wasn't gonna get lost. And they knew he was when he was supposed to come out. Well, there was a massive 17-day search covering thousands of acres. There was a point where the searchers thought maybe when he was going to be at Eleanor Lake, the fishing wasn't good, and so he went up to an adjacent lake. So they searched those areas as well. They didn't find anything. And I've got to tell you guys that... Uh, Losing a loved one is very emotional for everyone involved. Family, friends, even the searchers. And a lot of things happen on a search and rescue that you never hear about. Now, from reading everything I could about Joel, his dad and him were tight. Steve Thomason and Joel had hiked Yosemite several times since he was a, a young kid. Well, on October 1st, Yosemite acknowledged that they were going to restrict searches to just trails at this point. Well, Steve, the dad, felt that Joel went off trail. 
And he said, you know, you guys may be giving up, but I'm not giving up on my son. He was super healthy, in shape. I'm going to hike, and I'm going to find him. And he went out, and he entered that wilderness 16 times looking for Joel. Left me speechless. I've heard so many stories of dads that just won't give up on their son. They just keep going and going. They've got to find them. Now, on December 10th, same year, Joel's wife had a memorial service for him. From what I could tell, Steve wasn't real happy, but he went to the service. Through all of the searches, you've got to think that they're going to find a red kayak. And even if you don't find the red kayak, you've got a huge backpack that you can find. Now, even if the kayak was in the water and it deflated, that's still a big obstacle to see. It's a big backpack to see. They didn't find anything that I could tell. And I read probably 30 different items online. I could not find anything. Which to me is really suspicious. I mean, ultra suspicious. Because Joel would have set up a camp somewhere. And at that campsite, they should have found something. His backpack, a tent, sleeping bag, food, something. And if he was out on the lake, on the kayak, that meant his backpack would have been on shore. And let's say something happened on the lake. Kayak deflated, some reason he got hurt, and he drowned. Well, if they didn't see the kayak, the ground searchers sure would have found the backpack he was carrying. He's not going to carry that on the kayak. So where is the backpack? Another thing. Joel worked for the power agency at Hetch Hetchy for three years during the summer. And he spent all of his time in the backcountry. That meant he knew that backcountry probably better than almost anybody. He knew where there's small caves, inlets, places to hide, places to dump things. If he was looking to get cover from weather or issues, it would have been easy for him to find it. Very, very hard for searchers to find it. Now, canine units were brought in on the search and they didn't pick up anything which troubles me. The whole thing troubles me. If there was one search that they should have found people, Joel should have been found. There's no question. I can understand why Steve, his dad, went into this Hetch Hetchy, Eleanor Lake area. Now this is Twain Hart, Miwok Village, Long Barn, entry into Yosemite. It's a place called God's Bath. This area in here is very wild. But I'll tell you that where he was at gets a lot of hikers every year. A lot. Now this happened in 2021 in September. So there was still some time for searchers and people to hike in there and find them. And then you went through all of 2022 and they found nothing. My guess is Steve's still out there trying to find his son. I'm gonna guess he is. Because if I was a dad, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Trying to understand what happened to him. Now I don't wanna be anybody that 
makes any assumptions and I won't make an assumption on this but I'll give you an option I don't know what Joel's head was like and I don't know where his he was obviously a little down about losing his friend that's why he went into the mountains I hope he didn't take his life but if he did and he didn't want people to find him I doubt anyone's ever going to find him now if he got lost he got hurt first of all he didn't get lost if he got hurt somewhere off trail Eventually he'll be found. It may be five or ten years, but that backpack and the kayak are going to be there for the rest of eternity because they take forever to break down. So, those are your two cases. Bradley Caden, 39 years old, missing between March 5th and March 13th in uh, Lake Revelstoke near the Downey RV Resort in British Columbia and Joel Thomason 31 years old missing September 11th 2021 Hetch Hetchy Eleanor Lake area of Yosemite I'd appreciate it if you pass this around and you allowed other people to view it as they're uh, very current cases also uh, just an advisory please 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 do not, do not buy my books online. Don't go to Amazon or eBay, you're gonna get ripped off. Go to our website, NA, like North America, nabigfootsearch.com, they're $25. At eBay and Amazon, they're like $150, so don't do that. And uh, also on our website, you can buy our movies on Blu-ray and DVD. And you can buy our hats. Yeah, it's sunny outside right now. In fact, what you're looking at, it's about 78 degrees down there and no wind in that valley. We have just a little bit of a breeze up here, but not real bad. But yes, that water is gorgeous. While I've been standing here, there's been some uh, float boats that have gone by me. And uh, this, is a, this is an area where you can't get a permit for a commercial float, but there's a lot of people in the valley that have their own uh, rubberized boats and float this area because it's a nice, simple, easy float. So anyhow, please be nice to your family. Do something nice for someone in your community. You see someone that is in a little bit of a need of assistance coming out of a store, carrying something, go over there and help them. Our community needs to be nice to one another. So thanks for being here. I will hopefully be back soon. Politis out.